Welcome to another episode of Cadence Fishing TV. It's a beautiful day and I'm back up in Yorkshire with Paul Kazira. Paul, tell us a bit about the venue. Well, today, James, we're on Conifer Lake, which is a, a venue close to me yet again from the last video I did. And uh, it's near York, Allathorpe it's called. There's a, there's a golfing complex next door to us. But we're on uh, this private little caravan park and the owner, Graham, has allowed us to come today and have a, a little knock-up between us, he says, because he's interested to see how it'll go. Well, as always with you, Paul, it's got to be a <laughs> knock-up, hasn't it? Well, it has to be, yeah, because yeah, uh, I haven't fished a match for a while, so I'm looking forward to uh, the challenge. A bit of a challenge. It's quite a quirky place, isn't it? You've got to laugh when you say... It's really beautifully done and it's a lovely area. Uh, but it's uh, quite quirky. We've got some giraffes behind us. Yeah, we've, the dolphin we've got... there just tops out over there. Look. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's going to be our target species, you know. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah. So, Paul, I um, I didn't want to mention it, but I won the pound last time. <laughs> yeah. I've been polishing it, all right? Oh, yeah, it's still the same got, one, yeah. It has got heads and tails. It's yeah. not a double-headed coin. Right. So I'll toss for the... Chase I'll make, the And you yeah. can... Whoever wins can choose the peg out of these two we've selected, all right. right? Right then. Tails. It's heads. It's, uh, are you sure it isn't double-headed? <laughs> Listen. <laughs> right. I, I've, you, I've, I'll let you pick. It's no, I'll let you venue. pick. I'll let I know you you've pick. been practising on here for a few days. <laughs> Which one have you pre-baited? And, and I've pre-baited one, so okay. I'll let no, you pick, because then it'll be fair, right, won't no, it? I'll go won't. on this one here, 24 opposite the dolphin, all right? Right. Good well, choice. Let's, uh, let's Good get choice. Set up and we'll talk a bit about the format after today, okay? Yeah, great. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. Yeah. Come on then. Right then, Paul, we've both set up and um, what we've decided to do to sort of make it interesting is uh, you're going to fish the rod and line with a waggler yep. and I'm going to just fish the pole. And I'm actually limiting myself to nine metres on a CP 800. <laughs> Thought it'd be yeah. good to, good to show well, yeah. it, it's a cracking pole and uh, not everyone can afford a, an expensive long pole so I thought I'd uh, give that a go. That's, that's correct, yeah. I mean, I've used it myself yep. just for that purpose. We're not going to fish for carp either, are we? We're going to make it silverfish only. I mean, we yeah. should, perhaps if you could just give us a quick summary of the type of fish that we're likely to expect. Yeah, well, as, as you've known, I've never been here before, so it's just on here, sir. You well, know I'm that, you? Graham, the owner says, you've been here all week. <laughs> You're shacked up in one of these nights. And I, and I did tell him not to say that, but anyway. So, yeah, I've done a bit of background on this, and uh, it is absolutely stuffed full of hide. And they vary from from three, four ounce up to three pound. Okay. So uh, in fairness, I think it would be a good challenge to concentrate on those hide. Loose feed, no ground bait, just fish for the hide and you'll get a few roach and a few skimmers come along, maybe a perch, but, uh, and you will hook an odd carp. It's not, it's not a prolific carp water. Okay. And that's why we've come here. So you're saying hide only or silverfish? I just want to be clear, Paul, because I know these. Well, little it depends. Grey areas. I might have some skimmers in my peg. So shall we? Shall we play that bit out here? Do you think? <laughs> no, 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 think no. We no. Agree no. it now. Right, we'll agree it now. So it's, is it it's silverfish? Silverfish, yeah. Okay. Because so the only fish that don't count are carp. Yeah. F ones. F1's a carp. Okay, so no F1. Yeah, to me, F1's a carp. Okay. It doesn't look like a roach. I'm yeah. happy with that, as long yeah. as you're happy. Yeah. And we've got uh, two kink nets. Yeah. 
Uh, that's, he, that's been positive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. It's just that the owner Graham likes to keep the smaller fish separated no, from I the bigger fish. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. And um, what should we say? Uh, fish for four hours. Yeah, that that sounds fair. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, you're gonna need some bait, aren't you? Because I said I'd bring you some bait. Yeah. <laughs> so I've got you. Yeah, I'm, I'm sort of hoping. I've got you a I'm quarter sort... of a pint of Have mixed you? maggots. Yeah, mixed maggots. <laughs> and yeah. uh, some old pinkies from the fridge. Right. Thank you very much, James. Yeah. Now we'll sort you out and we'll get going. All right. Yeah. Great stuff. I'm just making sure they're all coming out of the same bucket, you know. You had said, because I, I have got some ground bait mixed up. I was going to put some in for yeah, the well, skimmers. Yeah, well, I did. Yeah, well, we've changed our mind now, haven't I? <laughs> Ooh, cheers. Loads of bait. And have you got my favourite quarter of a pint of casters? Yeah, you've got, you got a bit more than a quarter of a pint. Have I? Good man. All right. Right, well, uh, good luck and... Watch out for that pound. Let's do it. Yep. Paul, in the introduction, you talked about not using ground bait. <laughs> <laughs> I've mixed some ground bait up just a little bit. Yeah. Do you mind if I just put a couple of cups in just on one line just to kick things off? No, yeah, feel free, mate. Yeah, because uh, we're fishing for silvers and, well, and a lot of the lads watching will, will want some pointers in that respect anyway. Well, thanks for that, mate. I appreciate yeah. it. You know me, I'm, all, I'm always fair. <laughs> <laughs> Right, is that it? Oh, we started now then, have we? Yeah, come on, let's go. Right, okay. I tell you what, it's quite breezy, isn't it? Oh, it was great when we got here. They want a ripple. So I'm just going to cup some loose ground yep. bait in at nine metres, because you mentioned there was some skimmers here, didn't you? Yeah, th yeah, there is some nice skimmers and, and a few bream, yeah. But my sort of intention is that'll hopefully just attract some, some fish, some skimmers, and I'll start on the bottom and then loose feed and hopefully catch some fish up off the bottom. Yeah, well, that's the plan. Let's see what happens. Good luck, mate. And you. First blood to pour. Yeah, a little maggot roach. Well done, mate. So, have you fished much during the lockdown, Paul? Um, yeah, I've got out when I can. You know, when, when the... Uh, when the restrictions have allowed us, I'm quite fortunate that uh, you'll know from the last video we did, that venue is only six miles away from us and, and this one's just as close, even though I didn't know that at the time. Yeah, I've been fishing locally as well, but it's been a tough winter, hasn't it, with the conditions? And, oh, it uh, has. I haven't actually, I was just thinking, I haven't probably pole fished for about five months, so might be a bit rusty. Yeah, well, you know me and the waggler, that's all I've done was of late, really. I've had a few sessions on the pole, and I've got another little fish here. All right then, I better pull my finger out. Yeah. And this is one of the little eyed. Yeah, nearly all my fishing's been on my local Warwickshire Haven. And uh, I've just been going down with Mont and walking along a few stretches, taking a rod and catching some nice chub, but the, the conditions at times were horrendous. It's been very cold and the rivers have been up for ages. But 
typically you, they're about perfect now. Yeah, well, that's that's what happens, isn't it? You get the season out of the way. Uh, the only river I've got really close to me is the Hull, which is uh, 10 minutes away. And uh, and typically that's been bank top most of the winter. Yeah. I've had a few sessions on it when conditions have allowed. Oh, that looks like a skimmer pool. Oh. No, don't, I wish I'd brought some ground bait. <laughs> don't. <laughs> yeah, well done. <laughs> so, what was the rule again? Is it anything over a pound in one net and under a pound in the other? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, under a pound in one net, over a pound in another. It's a good start. It's obviously a prolific fishery, isn't it? Are we straight into Oh, it? yeah. Bites. Straight into them. I started on double red maggot. And I'm going to... Yeah, I'm... I'm double white because I'm uh, I'm starting off the bottom to be fair with just loose feed you see and because uh, I'm fishing for the roach and hide they live off the bottom anyway yeah You'd be happy to know that one come off. No, I, I wouldn't say that, Paul. That, <laughs> that's bad luck, that is, mate. Is it? Is your bait actually getting down to the bottom then, James? Well, yeah, I had the skimmer on the bottom and that eyed probably just a foot off the bottom. Yeah. So... I had to cobble together some rigs really because I hadn't uh, I hadn't really prepared very well but um, I've set three rigs up, one for fishing on the bottom, one a bit finer rig um, which I can fish at all depths and another for fishing shallow so. Yeah well I've got three rigs but uh, obviously slightly different to yours. I've got one that's probably 18 inches off the bottom which is what I'm using now yeah and then I've got another one that's 18 inches deep and then one that's really shallow if I can get the fish up later on but we're into the fish straight away so it's uh, looking pretty promising Just about warm or not, not to have a coat on, isn't it? Yeah, it is. The wind's quite cold though, I must say. But uh, yesterday was really cold. I was thinking uh, that we might need our top coats and gloves today. But, uh, but the wind's turned. Westerly wind, I think, today, isn't it? And it's, uh, it's improved it a bit. Yeah, the last day of the season, uh, I went to the River Air, which was an eye opener. Really, and, and maybe, some, maybe somewhere the next time you come up here and it's in the season, we'll go and give it a visit. Yeah, I'd like to. Whereabouts were you fishing? I fished uh, at uh, on the Murf uh, Murfield's new stretch at Woodlesford, and uh, they've only just acquired it this year, beginning of the year, on, on a 10 year lease, so Martin tells me, and it's absolutely stuffed full of big bream and chub. I mean, I, I went final day, conditions weren't great because the river was up as it always is, 
But uh, I had one eight pound four and one seven pound thirteen. That's unbelievable. And uh, a mate of mine had one ten pound thirteen ounce, along with six other big a ones. Ten pound bream. Yeah. For river fish and quite a powerful flow as well. Amazing. Well, this is a better fish, and I'm hoping it's not a carp. It doesn't look like one. I'm hoping it's a nice bream. I don't think it's going to be ten pound. <laughs> Got Monty's attention anyway. Yeah. I'm starting to think it might be a carp, you know. Might be a carp, that one. Any tension here? I couldn't tell you. Uh, for all we teased each other at the beginning, I've only been once. So, uh, and I've not had one. Well, it's a beautiful F1. Is it? <laughs> yes. Oh, nice. Yeah, very nice. Just a shame yeah, it doesn't count. Put it back, <laughs> nice and gently. I'm going to hold that up for Chappie because it's a beautiful fish, nevertheless. More like a a crucian, but I'm pretty sure it's an F1. Yeah, it will be. I think Graham stocked a few, he was telling me a couple of weeks ago. Well, we'll put him straight back. Yeah, so Paul, it's interesting that we're fishing two different tactics, really. You're fishing a waggler. How far out are you fishing? I'm fishing probably about 13 or 14 metres. That's yeah. all. Yeah. But um, it's a tactic I've used in our Silvers League in the winter. Not this year, obviously, because of lockdown, but previously. And I've found that when you're targeting roach and hide, especially up in the water, it, uh, it, it seems a better method than the yeah. pole for catching them, especially yeah. on the clearer waters, you know. Yeah, yeah, in the winter, yeah. Yeah, and this, and this water is quite clear, as you can see. So, uh, it seems that you can keep the fish coming pretty much all the, all the match, whereas the pole, the back off, disappear, come back. And of course, the beauty about Waggler is, if they do back off your feed, you just cast beyond it. And you're just feeding little and often every cast, yeah? Yeah, I am at the moment. Uh, but it seems that uh, there's plenty of fish, so I might up that a bit more as we go along. It's got a nice little roach there. That's second roach. I've had a few wide, and that's the second roach I've had. Well. Even though I'm fishing the pole a bit closer in, I'm, I'm doing the same thing really. I'm just loose feeding casters. I'm not going mad to start with, just to, to sort of gauge how the fish are feeding. Yeah. And of course, uh, the way that I'm fishing up in the water, you need to keep the feed going in. Keep those fish coming up and searching about. Every fish I've had so far is in great condition, perfect. Yeah, it's lovely. Um, I don't tend to fish for hide very much, and they're, they're a really beautiful species, aren't they? Yeah. Well, there's, there's certain places that I go where I catch them up to six pounds. Well, as you know, you've seen that yeah. when we went to Stonebridge that time. Yeah. There's some real nice ones there, but, but I've been told there's some big ones here as well. So hopefully, later on, we'll latch into one of those. Well, 
but uh, nothing big so far. Well, it's a good job we decided to count skimmers. <laughs> wow. Well, uh, so I was clear, you know, we've got to have clarity on this, Paul. I don't want you yeah. changing the rules halfway through. We... No, no. The wind is gusting about quite a bit and it's uh, really affecting what I'm doing. But uh, by sinking the line, I've been able to control it pretty good. And of course, the advantage of fishing close in and using these uh, shorter rods, these 11 foot rods, which are absolutely brilliant for this. I'm managing all right. Yeah, it's kind of um, swung round into a face now, hasn't it? Yeah. When I'm fishing like this, I, I like to feed by hand if I can. You know, normally I can... Yeah. I can feed sort of nine metres by hand, but that's with this wind, I can't, I can't get it past about five metres, so... That's it, yeah, I'm, it's I'm, just... I'm having to use uh, my catapult, and uh, I've started to loose feed a few maggots as far as I can throw at about five metres, just to give me another, another option as the session progresses. Well, I've, I've already gone on to uh, the next rig, which is uh, only a shallow one. Yeah. And they seem to be coming right up in the water, as I do. Well, I've sort of, I've got uh, three lines I'm feeding. And uh, on the one line, I'm not loose feeding as much. And I'm fishing on the bottom. Yeah. And my thinking there is I'm I'm just trying to catch more some more skimmers like that's actually uh annoyed but I've had two or three skimmers fishing on the bottom. And then on the other line I'm gonna feed it more regularly and uh try and work out what's the best stamp of fish because I think pretty much today you're gonna catch a fish every cast so I think the big consideration is trying to sort out the better fish. Uh, that's that's the secret, I think. But avoid, but avoiding the F ones and the carp. Yeah. A lot of the time, when you, if you start to up the feed, then they can move in, can't they? Yeah. I mentioned it at the start of the video, but I'm using our nine meter CP eight hundred pole, which, even though we classify it as a margin pole, is an absolutely beautiful pole. It's very stiff, slim, responsive. It's also very, very strong. But today I've been using it with our match top threes and you could probably tell from the video, it's super stiff, very responsive and I've got no problem fishing it at all. Even when I'm fishing for silverfish. So perhaps if you're on a budget, it's definitely a pole that's worth looking for. So I set up three different rigs on my match top threes. Um, this was the rig that I set up to fish on the bottom. It's a 0.4 float. And I basically just had a, a spread bulk of number 10 stops and a couple of stops below. And my thinking there was obviously not knowing the venue. I didn't know how it was gonna fish or respond. I thought, you know, if I've got a fish on the bottom, particularly when it's windy like this today, that bit bigger float's gonna help with presentation. Um, the float that I actually started on today and caught on to start with was this 0.2 version. So this float's a little bit slimmer, it's that sort of famous Chianti type shape. And 
the water's, I suppose it's around about four foot deep. Uh, and in this case, I've got a small spread bulk of number 11 shot and a couple of number 11s below. So it's a very versatile rig. I could start off fishing on the bottom and I caught a few of those skimmers. And then as the fish came up in the water, I started to shallow up and it was working quite well, but uh, it was very apparent after an hour or so that the fish were feeding right up in the water. So I switched over to this rig, which is a 0.1 version of the same float, same pattern. Again, I've just got, on this one, I've got three number 10 stots, a six inch hook length. And that's been great in the last sort of half hour. I finally started to catch a few better eyed up in the water. Um, hook wise, I've switched between a 20 or an 18 guru hook. And that's a F1 maggot barbless. Really nice hook, very sharp, not too heavy. Obviously, we're focusing on the silverfish today, not the carp. Um, so I really like that pattern. And my hook length was a 096 millimeter Best Pro to 012 mainline. The elastic I used is a six Vesp. So it's a solid elastic. I wanted something that I could not bump the smaller fish on. Again, not knowing the venue, I didn't know what we we're gonna be expecting. But if I do hook a bit bigger fish, like a bigger ride or a bream, you know, I've got the power to, to land it. Obviously I've had a few carp, which hasn't been great. I mean, I've managed to get them out quite easily on that balanced tackle, but unfortunately they don't count, do they Paul? So that's it really. Um, bait wise, I started off just cupping in a few balls of ground bait. Um, Actually, believe it or not, that's just brown crumb um, that I mix with a few micro pellets, a few casters, and I've just been loose feeding casters on my longer line and then feeding maggots by hand at five metres. But I think now for the remainder of the session, I'm clearly behind Paul. He's had probably seven or eight of those big eyed. I'm just going to focus on the caster, fishing longer um, and shallow and see if I can catch up by catching some of those good eye, but I definitely need snookers. Like James, I've got three rigs set up today, but as you've seen, I'm concentrating on the waggler. I've got two rigs set up on uh, the 11 foot match one. I've got one, the first rig, my deeper rig, is set six inches off the deck at the moment I'm using a Drennan Glow top float and as you can see when I use these floats and it's it's a theme I use with all my wagglers I set it up with three number eight each side of the float and uh, I add a little lead wire to the bottom of the uh, of the float that enables me to balance the float lovely set that right and if I want to change to a bigger float if conditions deteriorate and I need a bigger float, I just swap the floats round because I've got those same weights, same load capacity on all the floats. So we're always set up and ready to go. Down the line, it's number 10 shot on the drop, shirt button style. One, two, three, and a fourth one just above a six inch hook length. That hook length is 010 and it's attached to a B911 F1 size 18. That's on, on my deeper rig. And as the fishing gets better and the fish move up into the water, I have the same sort of setup. Again, the 11 foot match one. Same float, but this is set just half depth. Probably two foot six to three foot deep. And uh, hook length again, or 10, but this time it's on a 16 B911 F1 hook. And uh, usually when you get fish up in the water, they're not too hook shy, they're darting about. So I use a 16, it tends to uh, give you a better hook hold, less bumped fish, 
and less lost, less lost fish. And finally, I've not been able to use this rig yet. This one is a bit of a specialist one. And uh, this is connected to the 11 foot Match 2, a little bit more powerful rod. And uh, I've got one of these floats you might have seen me use before, they're filled with fluid. And I can set these right onto the top of my hook length. I can fish anything from six inch right on the top of my hook length to any depth I want. And uh, I've found with past experience, if I can get fish boiling on the surface, this float really works well. It uh, lands on the water, cocks straight away, very light splash, so it doesn't startle any fish at all. Um, but really you need calm conditions or the wind behind you. It's a bit difficult today because that wind's blowing crossover, so I've not had a chance to have a go with it yet. But if it does come into play, you better watch out, James. <laughs> and this one is attached to uh, 010 hook length and a size 16 B911 F1. And uh, that's my rigs, and hopefully they'll pay dividends. Well, Paul, we've been fishing for about an hour and a half now, and uh, it's been great sport, hasn't it? Oh, it has, yeah. I've, I've actually went to, or gone two minutes without a bite at one stage. I thought that was it, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it's been really good. So and, you've, uh, you've had um, probably three or four big-eyed or hybrids, haven't you? Yeah, I've had, uh, I've had three hybrids knocking on a pound, and I've had a one good-eyed. And I've found that uh, this last quarter of an hour or so, better fish seem to be entering into the swim. But they're not exactly on uh, where I'm feeding, they're on the perimeter of it. So, as we touched on earlier in the video, the beauty about the waggler is I'm just throwing beyond and around where I'm feeding. And that's where I've picked them off. 
Well, you're doing well because it's it's really quite windy and gusty, isn't it? But I um, I was sort of persevering with fishing on or just off the bottom, trying to catch those skimmers, and I did have four or five good sized skimmers, yeah. but I've had a couple of carp as well. Yeah, so noticed that, yeah. I've sort of um, followed suit now. I've gone onto a shallower rig, and I'm gonna see if I can catch some of those bigger ride that you're catching. Um, and I'm also feeding a, a closer line at five meters. Um, just to see if I can feed them that close. I, yeah. have caught, I have caught some fish on it, but uh, nothing very big at the moment. No, that, I think that five metre line's a good move with this wind, because it's changed direction now. It's blowing straight across us, and it's getting quite strong at times. Well, I gave you a nice little uh, 10 minute cushion then as well, didn't I? I had a, <laughs> <laughs> I had a, a tangle on my rig, and Chappie's head was shaking over there. But <laughs> definitely feeling a bit, yeah. a bit rusty, to be honest, Paul. Yeah, well, tangles happen to us all. And uh, it's just fortunate there's no trees about for me to cast into, so I'm not doing too bad at the moment on that respect. These, um, these eyed, these sort of three, four ounce eyed, they remind me of dace, the way they're sort of feeding and how they fight. Yeah, they jag about a yeah, bit, don't they? Yeah. yeah. Yet, uh, if you do get to experience one of those bigger ones, they're, <laughs> they're a bit more methodic and plod about, more like a bream. Yeah. But uh, I'll describe that better for you later on, yeah, hopefully. Yeah, thanks, mate. Yeah. But uh, if I it, really hope you don't catch any of them carp, Paul. That would be terrible if I would, I know. they moved it. <laughs> it would. And if I do hook one, I'll definitely try to keep it out of your swim. Thanks, mate. In a match, these these eyed that uh, graham has got in here will be real weight builders with the speed you can catch them. What's the best hook bait? Uh, I'll keep alternating between white maggot and caster, and caster seems to get me quicker bites yeah. and the better fish but of course when I'm uh, missing a bite on a caster it's usually getting shelled whereas a maggot you can cast out three or four times with the same maggot so it's working out really uh, the best method to build that weight up. Yeah I've, I've actually been catching best on maggot. Oh yeah. But uh, I keep slipping a caster on every so often. What what size hook are you using? What what hook length? At the moment, I'm on O10 uh, and a size 18, B511. Uh, that's a Camerson hook. And uh, I've not bumped many, and I've and I've uh, not lost many off. Just one, I think. So that seems to be working okay. But. Uh, what, a B511 or a B911? A B... Ah, a B5 sorry, B5 yeah, I said that wrong that's, again. That's a... I think you're trying to stitch me up here, aren't you? <laughs> that's my favourite... Yeah. That's my favourite bread punch up. It is, yeah. And that's... Because uh, I've been fishing the River Hull a lot, that's what I've been using, so... Yeah. All right. A bit of an outtake there for Chappie, and... Yes, it's a Camerson B911, size 18. Well... I'm hoping this is one of them good eyed. Oh yeah. Not a carp. Yay, it is. Oh no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's another carp. Hey, you've got to be careful what you wish for. I can't sneak that one in as an eyed. That's definitely a, an F1. 
Oh well. It's all good fun. Well, as I was saying about those bigger ride, you know, when you hook one, James, it plods about a bit. A bit like this fish that I've got on at the moment. <laughs> you know what? It always tickles me on these uh, head-to-heads that we have. <laughs> you're very, very... Uh, Cocky. <laughs> you're very jovial when you're ahead, aren't you? Oh, I'm ahead. I'd say you're quite, uh, quite ahead at the moment. Right. But, uh, yeah, I know, yeah. I have noticed when you start to, you get a bit quieter when it goes the other way. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. That'll quiet me down. It's a foul looked one. That's why oh, it was coming a bit go. different. Obviously, you're going to put that one back. You'd never put a foul well, fish in the net, would you? I'm a, tr I'm a true sportsman, and yes, I will definitely put that back. <laughs> What's that over there, James? Like hell you will. <laughs> Have you seen that over there? <laughs> that dolphin jumping? Yeah, that's it. I've had a few better ride in the second half and started to fight back a bit to Paul, but uh, he's still catching some, so. But it's been really interesting and I've, I've learned a few little tricks to try and sort out the better ride. I have had a few more carp as well, which hasn't helped, but um, I'm still loose feeding casters and I'm actually feeding in two areas. And I've found feeding before shipping out is quite a good tactic, so I'm going to go straight over the top of those casters. There's just so many fish here. I mean, I've had a bite or a fish pretty much every cast. And um, it's just trying to sort out the better fish. But it is intriguing, a little bit like what Paul said earlier. He's finding that the better rider are, are hanging away from the, the main feed. And that's what I'm finding. So. By feeding two swims, I can sort of feed one sometimes, go on the other one and catch a fish. And then next time, feed that pit spot and go to the other place. So it is really interesting. 
and uh, I'll just hold that one up and show you. Those are the sort of stamp that avoid that I'm catching now, and I really wish I'd been catching them in the first half. But uh, that's fishing, and as always, it just pays to adapt. I found that's the best sort of depth for me, which must be, I don't know, maybe two foot or just a bit less than two foot. I've tried shallower and I've tried a bit deeper. And um, it's clear that the fish are obviously feeding well now up in the water. So I've stopped feeding closer in. I was just catching small fish on that line. So I'll show you what I mean. I'll feed this time. Still the same distance out, but a good pouch full of casters to the left. And I'm not, I'm intentionally not fishing, feeding too tight an area. Just again, just trying to create this sort of safe area for the, for the bigger ride. So I'll try that spot where I fed just a minute or so ago. It's like, like Paul's doing on the, on the waggler. I mean, you can't help but spread the bait when you're fishing. Oh, that one's come off. You can't help but spread the bait when you're fishing a waggler, but I've actually started to do that intensely on the pole and it's definitely worked. So I'll go in there and I'll feed on my other line to the right. I can't work out why I've caught more carp. I must have had eight or 10 carp. Oh, there's a little fish. And Paul's had, he hasn't had one. Have you, Paul? Not one. I've tried the uh, single maggot, caster, but for me, double maggot's been best. I've tried side hooking the maggot, which is a good trick that Chappie's told me about from features he's been on where he's noted that uh, top anglers will do that. But for me, double maggot's best. Some of the, these I'd have tricked me. I've been thinking they're a carp and I've been bullying them to get them in as quick as I can. And it turns out to be an eyed and that's the case there. Well, the sun's out and I'm thoroughly enjoying getting back out fishing and fishing on the pole. There you go. Perhaps we'll check out how Paul's doing and see how he's feeding. We're well into the second half of our match now and uh, I'm still catching well. James is also catching well and all, but uh, I keep getting one or two of these better hide. I think I've worked out how to do it, and uh, when I've landed this, which isn't an hide, <laughs> it's a skimmer. But when I've landed this, I'll uh, take you through exactly what I'm doing now. And that's a surprise bonus that you don't get too often up in the water. Nice little skimmer. Right, very similar to what James has been doing on the pole. I've sort of worked out, as we've gone through the day, how to get a, a better fish or two. And the way I'm doing it, I've got caster on the hook. Seems to be the best bait for me. And uh, after I've got a fish, I'll just drop that in the edge and I'm putting a really good pouch full 
of casters in, spreading them about as you do on a waggler. Oops, and that's one of the downsides of dropping your bait in the edge. They're getting a little fish, but what I'm doing is a big pouch full of casters and then I'm casting beyond it. Because these bigger eyed and that skimmer as you've just seen, I feel are, are swimming around the, around the feed and just coming in and picking it off. So by casting out beyond it, that's why you're giving yourself a better chance of a better fish. And in my experience over the years, same thing works for roach as well. The main shoal fish, which tend to be the smaller ones, come straight into your feed. While the bigger fish just hang back a bit. And uh, the same goes for depth of water. If you've got a good depth like we have today, it's about five foot. If you feed a good pouch full, then those smaller fish will follow that bait down. And the big fish pick a few casters off, or maggots if you're feeding maggots, and then hang about. So by doing what I'm doing now, which is a good pouch full of casters, and then just cast just away from that, I don't know where the chap has caught that, but I'm uh, cast to the left hand side of that. You can cast either beyond or around it, but I tend not to catch, cast short of it, just cast around. And we're getting a bite every chuck, but um, as usual, when we're trying to do this little description, I'm catching small ones. But I'm pretty confident in getting a good one shortly for you. So same principle again, but this time I'm not going to feed. And I'm just going to see if the better ones are still hung in them top layers, while those smaller fish have followed it down. And it's just another smaller one. Having said that, these are really good weight builders. The three and four ounce a piece. So they're not to be sniffed at. But we set off the day, nice cautious feeding. Every single cast, just a few casters. But uh, since the day's gone on, and uh, there's plenty of fish to be caught, We've just up the feed, but I tend to be, as I've said, big pouch full and then two or three casts without feeding and then another big pouch full. And that's uh, proved in my case to be the, the best option today. And in general, it, it works quite well when you've got a lot of fish in front of you. So time for another big pouch full of casters. Just cast beyond them. And here's an example of one of those better fish just hanging off the feed. And it doesn't happen very often, but as I was saying, there's your point proven. A better fish just off that main feed.
well, I think that's about the last chuck. James. Well, that's uh, definitely going to help you, isn't it? I've ended up with a nice fish. That's a lovely ad. Are you, are you playing one as well? Yep, I was just about to shout time. Right. It's not as big as yours. You've but... got 10 minutes to land it. <laughs> International <laughs> no, rules. No, no. I'll unhook mine. There we go, just a small roach for me to end on. Well done, Paul. Well, that was good. It's been great fun, hasn't it? Oh, it's been fantastic. Pretty frantic, really. I can't remember fishing a venue where I've had a bait from start to finish. <laughs> it's been absolutely great. Are you ready? Right then, we'll, uh, I'll weigh in first, all right? Yeah, okay. And you've zeroed the scales? I, I've zeroed the scales, Chappie's witnessed it. So I'm gonna put the better fish in first. Oh, I'm feeling nervous already. Yeah, get a lot. Some nice fish there. Oh. Are you right? I'm already feeling a pound down. You're a comedian. Are you ready? I can't see it. You're going to have to shout a, a number out for me and I'm going to have to trust you. It's 48. Does it stop or does it...? Well, it should do, but I'm shaking because <laughs> it's that heavy. Ian, call it. 48, 48 pound. pound. Right, you're just going to show them to the camera. Yep. That's a it's great a, catch, that, James. It's a lot of fish. I've had a lot smaller fish than you, haven't I? You've had a lot of fish. Have it. Thoroughly enjoyed it. What a fantastic venue. When you're ready. Well, it's, ah, it's ah, 29. Ah. I'll, let, I'll let Chappie do it. Within a couple of 29.8. 29.8. We're having a quick look at them. You got some absolute beauties in there, Paul. Oh, some quality ones there. Yeah. What a fantastic place, yeah. We're going back. What do I need in here then? 30 pound. You've got it, no bother. I don't think so. You've done it, man. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? £30.15. Is it? Yeah. So yeah. what's that? <laughs> Go on then, 31 pound. We'll have a quick look at them smaller ones then. Is there a pound's worth there? I reckon you know Chappie, you've got what it. what do you think? Yeah. 60 pound seven. <laughs> yeah. It's brilliant. Yeah. I've got to get the pound. <laughs> right then, Paul. You're keeping the pound. It's come back to you, mate. Well the done. Good old Yorkshire pound. Absolutely fantastic. What was it? Uh, about ten pound difference, wasn't it? In the yeah, end. Yeah, yeah. No, you immaterial fish. really. <laughs> you you got pounds. slaughtered. Let's face it. There you go, mate. I'll drop that into your hand. Thank you very much. Brilliant. <laughs> Here you go, mate. Thanks a lot. Yeah, and we'll have another go somewhere yeah. else. And thanks to Graham from the fishery. We've thoroughly enjoyed it today, haven't we? Fantastic and, uh, fishery, yeah. It was absolutely brilliant. So hopefully we'll come back another day. Well, I know one thing, I'm coming back. <laughs> that is local for you, isn't it? Oh, it is, yeah. I'm just, brilliant. just, just so pleased we found a place. Well done, Paul. And uh, yeah. thanks again, and thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks for watching. <laughs> and thanks for the pound, James. <laughs>